AI and copyright law. In this, you read about various IPRs. And the other day, we were talking about ethics of AI, the so-called Ghibli or Ghibli trend, where the intent of the uh, original creator who created that art form in the backdrop of world war as an anti-pacifist agenda or, you know, um, just to say, to create some respite in the gloomy times of war, to use art as an expression, to be very vocal against war. That was the original intent and design elements used there. You know the Ghibli trend, right? The cartoon that, that was trending on Instagram because OpenAI decided to blindly mimic and use it as a marketing tool and also train their data models. We were feeding our pictures to train the data models. It got better and better. So there are so many conflicts opening up in this scenario. I'm briefly opening up the dimensions because it is difficult to cover all of them in a single day here. I'll just open up the dimension, leave it at that, and we will close the loop as we discuss it on some other day because there are multiple articles that are going to come up here. Primarily in this article, we are discussing two cases in the US where the discussion is about is AI infringing copyrights? Let's say I'm a journalist. I wrote an article. You're blindly mimicking that and producing something out of it. And I don't get to have any incentive. Is it fair? The technocratic companies like OpenAI are claiming that if we start imposing copyrights, it's not going to help anyone because anyone implying OpenAI because primarily AI models thrive on real time training. Also, there is a danger of something called algorithmic bias. Okay, long story short, there are many instances where whatever is the intellectual work of the creator can actually be replicated by AI just by training them with thousands of copies, if not millions. They just get better and better through a concept called reinforced learning. It's like you go to LKG and write A for Apple for the first time. You don't know what this symmetrical alphabet means. What do you do? You just replicate A, 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 A till you actually recognize that letter. That is in the simplest way, the concept of reinforced learning. You pick a pattern, repeat it multiple times, train the data sets of the systems in such a way that it, when even something similar like R, uh, let's say, all this will be recognized as A by the system. The problem with this reinforced learning is that you are neither questioning the intent nor the outcome. Or let's say, for example, originally if the creator uh, does not have a copyright, not only is he losing the copyright, but is also losing the incentive for his creation because there is no legal remedy. Someone from, let's say, a very poor tribal hamlet created a masterpiece. He is not aware that, okay, this is something that needs to be protected. Otherwise someone might copy for him. It is a new uh, product that he wants to showcase to the world. All that open AI needs to do is introduce it as a new feature. Just add one more tab. You have chat now, right? You want to create images. Okay. Join. We'll have one more tab. They're using their position of leverage and first comers advantage. Is it wrong? Maybe not for them. But what about this person? Either you ride the wave or this is probably the end of creative. See, AI trains your uh, data and creates models that are existing till now. But if something new has to come, we need to have the ability to resist what AI is giving us and to be able to resist and accept, I mean, uh, reject to resist and reject whatever is AI giving us, we need to have a higher sense of judgment, higher amount of clarity. And for that critical thought is extremely important.
in the absence of a law what is the incentive for us to think as a generation one generation is witnessing an erosion of attention the second generation will witness the erosion of you know uh, attention as well as critical thought and we would be like zombies walking over at the whims and fancies of technocratic companies and that's very likely to happen in the future if we don't have guardrails i'm not talking about science fiction i'm seeing that as a reality you will see a lot of kids a lot of young parents because they are not able to manage without a job traditional breakdown of society is happening where the kids who are getting married i mean sorry the uh, couples who are getting married and giving birth to kids they are not able to give time to their kids and they give a phone the videos where you take away that phone it becomes like a mass hysteria kind of a situation where the kids are angry or they spend more time on let's say a video game they normalize shooting a person to an extent that it is okay i've seen this before what's so wrong about it and the games are so realistic that whatever you consider unimaginable looking in real life becomes so normal to them and this is the kind of world that we are going to enter having no guard rails is not just an issue of law or of, of copyright it is an issue of a destruction of the traditional structures in the society on sidelines i'll just tell you one more narrative an interesting narrative back in 1950s just after the world war ended and the us economy was back on track a single person earning was good enough for a household then came the whole narrative that women are left behind it is true definitely it is true the kind of disrespect women received was universal because of the traditional patriarchal society so this the antidote for that was putting women in jobs you're putting them in jobs but as a generation passed they did not figure out how to manage the traditional division of labor and now this created care economy something called care economy what was considered to be natural for a family now transformed into another economic avenue for example child rearing is something so natural for almost entire human race throughout our history now two working parents even if they are working full time they cannot manage without a nanny or a crèche in their office so the kids spends half of the time with the phone and rest of the half time with nannies and tomorrow a generation later we are wondering if they will uh, actually care about us why will they care about you when did you care about them so every kid who is arguing like i'm seeing kids after 2010 you go on instagram or any reddit kind of forum it will be like a shock it's like a cultural shock they'll be like it's it's not my job to take care of my father he should be planning for his retirement fund he will be absolutely this is the exact comment i read and which left me shell shocked for a minute he he must be an idiot not to plan for his retirement fund probably not more than 17 15 to 17 just a teenager at 15 and 17 i don't even know what is retirement forget retirement fund generation gap the destruction of a society or i don't know if it is destruction destruction as the way we know it maybe it is uh, creating a new world order technology is definitely shaping lives not just economic relations but also social relations so much to think about start with this article and as a series we will continue that's it for today see you tomorrow